Good afternoon. I'm the Reverend Dr. Scott Jones, Senior Minister of the First Central Congregational United Church of Christ in Omaha, Nebraska. And I wanted to follow up on yesterday's sermon, which I preached on families of choice and talked about how families generally do not look like that idealistic image we have in our head from 1950s America and sitcoms like Leave it to Beaver and Father Knows Best. I also talked about how we are empowered to help define the, our expectations in relationships, and therefore members of our family of origin are, do not have the right uh, to hurt us, and we can set expectations in those relationships. And thirdly, I talked about families of choice and how we are empowered to create our own families from the people who do love and care for us, support, respect us, and empower us to live authentically as ourselves. But there was a fourth point that at various points times last week was a part of the sermon that I ended up editing out, and that was how the role of family within the Bible and the Christian tradition, which it might surprise you has been pretty ambiguous. The family values, religious right crowd of the last few decades has seemed to teach us that the Bible and the Christian tradition comes down very firmly on the idea of the American nuclear family. I did point out yesterday that you won't find anything like that family appearing anywhere in scripture. But the truth is the our Christian tradition has been pretty ambivalent about the family. Jesus of, himself, of course, was not a family man. And one time in the Gospels where his siblings and his mother, who seem to be embarrassed by what Jesus is saying and doing, come to retrieve him, and Jesus won't see them. He says, those aren't my family. And he looks around at his followers and says, you are my sisters and brothers and my mother. You are my family. Jesus was very much about this idea of families of choice. And in fact, most scholars see that Jesus was very critical of the household and the family as they were traditionally practiced at his point in time because those that institution was patriarchal and hierarchical and, and did a lot of damage to people. And Jesus seemed to want to empower people to live more authentic lives and the kind of lives that God wanted them to live. And, and so talked about these kind of free associations and and forming new bonds of friendship and community, out of which, of course, developed the church. And so even St. Paul continues this tradition. Now, there are some letters that uh, ha are in the New Testament under Paul's name that reinforce the traditional hierarchical family that talk about wives submitting to their husbands and stuff like that. But most scholars, most serious scholars, for a long time have not believed that those letters were written by Paul. And one of the reasons is because of their teaching on the family. The letters that we believe are authentically written by Paul, he's pretty ambivalent about marriage and the family. He thinks that the highest calling in our lives as Christians is to the church. That should be our most important relationship, our most important commitments. And if we have to get married, we only do it because we have to. And But that still, even then, should not be the most important thing in your life. But he would prefer that people not get married and not you know, have a household and a family, but be about spreading the gospel, which then begins a long tradition in Christian history in which celibacy was actually viewed as the highest form of the spiritual life and not marriage. We know that it was about a thousand years into Christian history before a ceremony for performing marriages within the church even existed, showing that this was not a high concern for Christianity. All of that began to change a little bit during the Protestant Reformation, where the Reformers began to teach that uh, ordinary Christians, in, married Christians in their everyday lives, could lit, be disciples of Jesus in just the same way that the celibate monks and nuns and priests were. But it was really finally the Puritans, our spiritual ancestors in the United Church of Christ, who made the family, the household, the center of Christian life and existence. They viewed that the highest form of Christian life was being a good father, a good husband, uh, raising a household. And then the and there were some real benefits that came from this. One was a care for children, unlike had not existed before. Second was an appreciation and valuing of sex within the bonds of marriage. And through much of Christian history, 
even within marriage, sex was very looked down upon. And the third thing was that the home then became the center of Christian education and the place where parents passed along their values and their teaching to their children. And, and it was valued as such. It was our spiritual ancestors who started the family Bible. And if you think about the family Bible that your grandmother or great-grandmother probably had, it was filled at the be beginning with records of births and baptisms and marriages and deaths. It was within the Bible that one kept the records of one's household and family tying these two sacred parts of one's life together. The downside, of course, is that any emphasis upon the traditional family uh, led to a reinforcement of patriarchy and hierarchy. And so we, in, of the Puritan tradition, are somewhat to blame for the modern family values crowd who uh, took the negative sides of those ideas. So the truth is the Christian tradition has generally been pretty ambivalent about family. And only within recent centuries has placed such importance and value on it. But what we can learn from this is that family ought to be a place where we are loved and cared for, supported and respected, and empowered to be our authentic selves. A place where there's a mutual exchange of love with everyone giving and receiving. And if a family embraces those values, then they are helping to sustain uh, the kingdom of God. So those are some extra thoughts I didn't get to yesterday. Uh, any questions, any comments? I look forward to the conversation.